they come in. I'm Michelle Blakely and I own C. Jake and Jane Train and I am thrilled to have each of you with us today. Quick 30 minutes, we're gonna knock it out and um, get you guys going with some fantastic tips to keep you up and running. With a fair number of my webinars, I really like to start from a place of gratitude. So we're just gonna take 60 seconds right now. We've all been through a lot, some of us more than most. And I'd really like you to take a few full deep breaths in and out and think of something, just one thing that you are grateful for, whether it's today or in the big picture. Good. Okay, so hopefully that was easy to do. If it's not easy to do, I'll circle back on why that's so important. Um, for me, this is a trail near my house after a storm. Immensely grat grateful that I'm so close to a trail during all of this and that I can just get out and be in nature. So what's going on out there? I started giving these webinars when uh, I felt I could see the forest for the trees a little bit back on March 21st of this year. And this was the screenshot from John Hopkins, Uni John Hopkins University um, of the global impact. We had 332,000 uh, cases of COVID. Fast forward to the last webinar I gave, which was June 18th, 8 million. 391,000. And fast forward to today, 10 million cases. So just in the last 12 days, we've increased 2 million more cases. What's going on out there June 18th? One of the things that I posted here was that uh, all 50 states were reopening in some capacity. There were a few that were just regional reopenings, but really everybody was opening up the gates and moving into their, you know, phase three or phase four of businesses reopening. And of course that impacted us as fitness professionals because we were uh, quite often uh, later in the phase openings in the country. Now this is very interesting and I bring this up intentionally. This is how the New York Times is reporting all 50 states just 10 days later are reopening and closing again, right? Um, let's see if I can go back a screen. This is what we looked like on June 18th. Everybody's reopening in some aspect. This is what we look like today. Some of us are closing again uh, for various reasons, but inarguably because opening happened too soon or the certain scientific guidelines were not being followed and we're seeing cases spike again, we're seeing hospital systems being overwhelmed. I always want my trainers and studio owners to come from a place of data, to come from a place of facts. So that's why we go through this. Um, some other things to really consider, there is poor leadership on a political scale to some degree for some of us in the fitness industry, um, in our industry specifically, I'm not saying across the board, but at different points, a lot of us were at a loss what to do next, and that's understandable. We were scrambling, but globally, we as a country are exhibiting very poor leadership. This issue has become politicized when it is truly a health and scientific issue and an economic issue. Um, so that's impacting all of us. There are understandably recent racial protests um, in light of the atrocities that have gone on. So that understandably has affected all of us. Um, there is a she session going on as well. So that's something near and dear to my heart as a single working mom. A lot of people are being impacted economically, but most profoundly uh, moms, working moms are being impacted and especially those single working moms, which is gonna have long-term effects. Unemployment numbers are high, and some of us aren't even open yet, or um, we have opened, but I want all of us to be prepared for any kind of waves that are coming in the fall. I didn't uplight, update this bullet for this talk. I would say the waves that are coming right now, unfortunately. So, tough stuff, true facts, difficult pills to swallow. And this is a piece of my advice for all of you. 
It's a quote from uh, Alcoholics Anonymous. It's not a program I've gone through, but some individuals I follow reference it, and I think it's incredibly beautiful. We'll read it together really quickly. Acceptance is the answer to all my problems today. When I am disturbed, it is because I find some person, place, thing, or situation, some fact of my life unacceptable to me. I can find no serenity until I accept that person, place, thing, or situation as being exactly the way it is supposed to be at this moment. Unless I accept life completely on life's terms, I cannot be happy. I need to concentrate not so much on what needs to be changed in the world as on what needs to be changed in me and my attitudes. And I am well aware, everybody, this is a tough pill to swallow right now. But my goal is always to help and to help you thrive and survive right now and sustain yourselves and the clients and the family members and dependents that count on you. This is key. There is so much we cannot control. I want you to control what you can. And acceptance is part of that. A message I've been giving all through these months is I want you to bet on yourself. Think of the hard things you've gone through before and put your money on yourself that you can navigate this and you can do this. Secondly, I want you to be the leader. If our leadership is poor out there, it doesn't mean our leadership in our households and in our businesses and in our careers can't be extraordinary, okay? Own that, embrace it, take back your power and do that, okay? Here we go. Starting off right out of the gate, my first tip of the top 10 is I want you to have two simultaneous plans right now. First one, life is now. I want you to be present with the curveballs that we're all experiencing on a daily, if not hourly basis. We have to be aware of those things. We have to engage in those things and we have to react thoughtfully to those things, right? Um, life is now embrace that you have to set aside, time, set aside time on a daily basis to address the things that are occurring um, hour by hour to our businesses because it matters and it's relevant. At the same time, I need you focusing on the future, okay? This idea, the future is good. And I intentionally chose two positive uh, images here. Um, while reacting to everything going on right now, we also have to be planning as best we can for what's coming down the pipe and how we can serve our customers, our business, our employees, and our careers as well as humanly possible. So making time for both of those things and accepting both of those things is key. Denying that that is not essential right now is not going to help, okay? Or for focusing too much on one and not the other is going to leave us high and dry. Next. Virtual and online options are here to stay. Uh, many of you have heard my story about why I started offering these webinars as soon as uh, COVID hit. Um, I'd been doing virtual training, not really online training, virtual training, so real-time training for about seven years um, from a really organic place for some clients. So I had a lot of experience and I knew how tough this was gonna hit, so many of us being in-person businesses. So I just started, you know, getting those tips out there and sharing how to do it. Yes, we're reopening, but the truth of the matter is virtual and online options are here to stay. People who would not have experienced it before have experienced it now and they've embraced it. They've seen the benefit, okay? They're going to expect it. They've now seen, oh my gosh, I can still get my workout in without going back and forth commute time to the gym or carrying an extra bag to work or things of that nature. Here are some of the reasons, if you have not accepted it, I'd ask you to still try to get on board and learn more about it. Or if you've accepted it, thought of it as a Band-Aid and think that you're going to abandon it when we reopen and as we reopen, I invite you to consider some of these things. So travel, when clients travel, instead of they cancel or reschedule or train heavier before or after, with virtual real-time training or online options, they can still train with you. You can maintain your billing. I advise recurring billing for everyone. 
the entire time, okay? Cancellations. When clients cancel appointments, we can eliminate some of that, right? They may be less likely to cancel because they have a virtual option, right? It's nothing for me to train a client in real time, in person, in the gym, and then someone says, oh my gosh, I overslept, I'm not gonna make it in time, for me to say, no problem, hop on Skype in five minutes, I'll train you virtually from the gym, okay? It helps a great deal with cancellations. Or if you have online scalable offerings, you can deliver that to them instead of their real-time appointment that for some reason they had to let go of. Virtual and online options are fabulous in terms of value adds, creating things that can be used in addition to a more expensive service that give them the feeling of getting more for less. I absolutely love this aspect. Virtual and online options really give clients varying price points. Some of what we've experienced in the tumultuous nature of the effects of the economy and people's um, concerns and anxiety levels going up is people have pulled back in spending and some of it's very understandable. If you have virtual and online options, you can offer different price tiers that you couldn't before because the cost of paying employees or paying yourself was so great. This offers people an ability to stay in your business without leaving your business, right? So I have, you know, I tested everything before I give advice and so I have you know, $150 online training option where it's something I create once for the month and then send it out. Well, my normal virtual training is $500 a month. So somebody who needed to leave or wanted to leave because they thought, oh, I can't afford that anymore. They can stay in my business and I can just transition them. Hey, I know you're getting hit hard right now, but I still want to support you with healthy living. Why don't you do the online training option for 125 the flip side of that is you can also onboard people with a lower price point that don't really know or um, haven't had the opportunity to trust you 110% yet. So you can uh, bring them on at the $125 price point. They absolutely love it. Check back in and then move them into a more expensive uh, or robust offering. Okay. Oh, there we go. Um, I have a question for everyone, so I am gonna ask you to take yourselves off mute. What would you do, don't overthink it, to make an individual or society less healthy? Go ahead and just shout it out. Quarantine <laughs> them. Oh, Teresa, you read my mind. You read my mind. So the reason I asked this um, and it was great because the first time we did this was people, everybody was saying, one person said, watch 24 hour news, eat preservative rich foods, eat drive through foods a lot. Um, uh, all these exercise specialists, none of them said don't move, which I thought was hilarious because it was too obvious to us, right? The quarantine itself, the stay put options are a recipe for decreasing our health. I, we could talk about that for half an hour. We won't, but you get it, right? That light bulb goes off, hopefully, right? Non-exercise activity thermogenesis, preservative rich foods, lack of access to fruits and vegetables, lack of movement, uh, lack of exercise, lack of access to the gym, you know, all these things, right? Anxiety is up, stress levels are up, econ economic stress is up, okay? So what I want you to do is create post-stay put solutions. I want you to create a post stay put assessment because your clients are not in the shape they were in before this all went down. All right. We can talk more about what could be included in that in the Q and a, I also want you to create post stay put solutions in terms of your offerings. It doesn't mean you have to reinvent the wheel, but you might need to tweak things, right? Simplify what you're offering right now. Get relevant really to the people that are um, recovering from being put at home, right? Having to do uh, very little movement, having had their stress level go up, having had their eating habits and movement habits really plummet since the stay put orders, okay? Tweak those things to really serve and honor 
um, what they're needing from you right now. Make it easy for them to be engaged and to, to purchase for you and rejoin with you again. Number four, we talked about the leadership out there is really rough. So I want you to set your standards, okay? And uh, I want you to do it in these aspects among others. One idea we have with a client is to make sure everyone has a COVID-19 waiver. So there's some good advice going on out there right now with liability. Everybody who knows me well knows I'm a safety girl. I'm a numbers girl. Um, make sure that you reach out to your insurance provider, your liability insurance provider, and get a COVID-19 specific waiver and have everyone sign that. Have it done digitally, have it done before they even come in, whatever works for you, um, but make sure you get that COVID-19 waiver to protect you and your other clients and your business. I want you to have cleanliness and friendliness protocols, okay? We got tons, we had tons of information come out about the cleanliness re requirements and different products you can use. There's lots of information out there, so have your policies. One really important detail that's coming out that those of us in the boutique studio model and in the owning our own business model are crushing it with, but the bigger uh, boxes are not doing initially quite as well for, is that we're good about having cleaning everywhere, right? We have it everywhere. Where bigger facilities are used to having cleaning more spread out, well, the boutique way is the better way. We need to make this, uh, forgive the expression, but like idiot proof. So I would advise at every single station, you have one complete set of cleaning products, right? Whether it's wipes and spray and um, uh, you know, the basket and the garbage can and the hand sanitizer and, you know, disposable masks or things if you have those available, right? Have it repeated all over your space, okay? The other thing with this one is cleanliness and friendliness. Make it standard that if your clients, if your, I'm sorry, if your trainers aren't cleaning, that they're, if they aren't being friendly, excuse me, that they're cleaning, okay? Um, so make it part of your culture now that it's just something they're doing. It's their new habit, right? Instead of picking up weights, because that's not really an issue anymore, um, you know, they are uh, making sure they're cleaning as they go because that message being sent to clients is huge, right? It's not just um, what's going on in reality, it's what's being perceived as reality. And we wanna make sure all of our people, including our staff, know that we are not messing around when it comes to cleaning standards. I want you to set your own standards in who you're taking your guidance from, right? What organization? Um, you see what I did there? Who? World Health Organization? Yeah, good. Okay. Who are you taking your guidance from? So make sure you've decided as the leader of your organization, where's your guidance coming from? What are the agencies that you respect and trust? to give you the proper guidelines, okay? To give you the most cutting edge information on what's going on, okay? Set your standards. I want you to have a pledge, okay? I got this idea from a client who got it from, uh, I think it's a, a business advice for unicorns. It's a, it's a great uh, uh, marketing company apparently. Um, but have your staff, and your members all take a pledge, right? I pinky promise I'm not going into groups larger than 50 people or larger than 10 people. No one in my home has had a fever. I do not have a cold, right? Have them take that pledge to say that I own my behavior is affecting everybody else in here. And I'm gonna be responsible for that and exercise care and how it affects everyone else. And just think the impact that has on your clients and your staff, that you're holding everyone accountable and that we're owning our effect on one another and the safety for one another. Set your standards for taking temperature when everyone comes in, or if for some reason you can't do that and can't get a hold of a touchless thermometer, that you're asking everyone to take their temperature before they come in. That's a less appealing option in my mind, but um, you know, set your standard for what that's gonna be. Set your standards for masks. How's that going to work? Um, Colleague, fabulous uh, podcast. He was saying, you know, remember our, you know, um, the exchange rate when we're doing higher intense, the respiratory exchange rate when we're doing higher intensity work is greater 
than when we're doing lower. And that that we're finding has an impact on COVID. So set your standards for masks and how you're gonna navigate all of that. Also, if your city, if your county, if your state has a uh, certification, COVID-19 protection certification, have your whole team do it online, right? Take the test, read the thing, watch the video, make sure everyone is informed and take some of that heavy lifting off your own shoulders. I want you, this is new in addition to the June 18th uh, airing of this, I want you to set your own standard for when you are going to close again if you have to, okay? When are you going to close again if you have to? When are you going to shift out of in-person and back to virtual again if you need to, if it's becoming unsafe for you or your clients or your employees, okay? Be prepared for that. What are your markers for when you're going to do that and how you're going to do it? And of course, reopening again. Number five, this is absolutely one of my favorite. You cannot over communicate. You cannot over communicate. All right. Do you have, this is going to sound so dense, but do you have a we are open sign on your brick and mortar right now if you're open? Okay, have you communicated clearly every step of the process to your employees about being open or when you're reopening or if you've had to pull back again, when you're gonna reopen again? Have you communicated to your clients an abundant amount of times when you are reopening, okay? I have heard more stories of people thinking they're communicating it clearly and they're not on both ends, right? Um, I understand, I'll get the pushback. Well, we don't know when we're gonna reopen yet. That's okay, communicate just that. Say, hey, so glad you're still with us virtually. We're loving the new such and such. We still haven't heard when we're gonna reopen for our county, but we're gonna let you know as soon as possible. That's communicating. Even if you don't have the answer, say, I don't have the answer yet, but you're communicating it, okay? And then um, make sure that when you are working with your staff, even if things are uncertain, you're using role play, okay, to communicate effectively with each other. You cannot over communicate part two. I want you to be communicating via email newsletter, via text message, through banners and signs on your building, through um, QR codes. When someone does walk by, throw a QR code on your banner or your sign and have them be able to set up that initial post stay put order you know, assessment with you, have a link directly to that kind of page. And then this is gonna sound crazy for some of us, but I want you to reach out via phone call to people, right? Reach out, check in, see how they're doing, let them know your reopening plans and that you can't wait to welcome them back. Who do we buy from? Does anyone have an answer for this? Who do we buy from? Former clients are gonna crush this one. Three, I would buy from someone I trust. Bad girl, beautiful. <laughs> So we buy from, thank you, thank you, thank you. She's not a plant, I swear to God, everybody. She's not a plant. Um, we buy from people we know, like, and trust. And which one is most important right now? Trust. I want you to post your safety training efforts everywhere, okay? If everyone has gone through your state or county or town's post COVID-19 certification, put it out there. Let everybody know. You've got cleaning protocols, you've taped everything off, you're calling to reach out to everyone to make sure they're safe and well, okay? Post your efforts everywhere. Everyone's taking a pledge, everyone has to wear a mask, everyone is getting touchless thermometer taking, right? Post it everywhere, let them know you're taking this seriously because that is going to be a huge differentiator. We are seeing businesses in our industry fall, file bankruptcy, um, change ownership, go into mergers, okay? There's lots of things moving around out there right now, and that provides lots of opportunity for help, for us to help people that don't have their club anymore or their usual go-to places. If you're slow, I want you to work on your business, okay? I want you to prepare for shifts in clients. I want you to clean up your finances and your expenses. I went through all my, I'm not slow, but I went through um, all of my like memberships, right? All those 10, 20, 50, $70 things that I pay for every month. Um, repurpose your content, 
okay? What could you take and make it into a podcast just using the audio? What could you take and chop up into smaller videos? What could you take and make into um, uh, a nice boost for all of your members, not asking for any kind of sale, just uplifting them and helping them? I want you to reach out and connect with colleagues, right? Things like this, if you see anyone on it that you recognize, say hi, check in, how are they doing? Do they need anything? How could you help? How are they navigating all of this? Clean up your tech or software. I mean, geez Louise, right? Like when's the last time you looked at the, your, your bounce rate from your newsletter or actually imported all of those contacts into a newsletter or a texting software? I want you to plan your marketing efforts, plan how you're gonna change your offerings, plan what you're gonna be doing in the next three to six months as best you can. The short of this, these, these, sorry, these slides are in the wrong order, is weed and seed, right? Go through the garden that is your business and pull all the weeds and plant all the seeds, okay? If you're slow or concerned about marketing efforts, it can never hurt to say thank you. Your loved ones that have stood by you, your vendors, your clients, your staff, your members, your followers, it can never hurt to say thank you. Thank you for staying with us. Thank you for sharing this post. Thank you for your support. Thank you for keeping your membership running, even though we weren't sure exactly how we were gonna offer value to you, okay? One thing that I'm doing that's really specific, um, I'm sending just an unsolicited gift. It's one of my absolute favorite things, one of my absolute favorite companies to all of my existing personal training clients. I don't have many, because um, that's not my focus right now, but just send it, just send something loving or kind if that's within your budget, or if you want to extend that gratitude for them continuing to stay with you through all of this. My last and best tip is focus on your mentality. I want you to know your worth, remember the immense value of exercise and what you provide for your clients. And I want you to foster abundance and an abundant mindset through gratitude. We're going to be launching our small group business coaching in uh, near the end of July. I'll have the dates on that soon. It's called Strength in Numbers. We have a whole mastermind webinar on the importance of an abundant mentality. Phew, did I do it? Oh, 32 minutes after, I was close. I was really close, everybody. So thank you for sitting and listening. We're gonna move into having some questions, but I am gonna send you a follow-up link to everyone that attended. Um, I'd love for you to jump on a complimentary 20-minute business coaching call if there's anything I can do to help you guys. But um, let's move into questions. I'm gonna open up the chat. Take yourself off um, mute if you need to. I'm sorry, I joined late, Michelle. Uh, That's okay, the, Mark. Uh, Thrilled to have you. Yeah, uh, with what, everything I caught, I mean, we open uh, on Monday it yeah. is our reopening. And uh, pretty much we, we're on uh, right there with you. All the things you were saying were right on, you know, so. Thank you. Uh, I think, you know, we do have to be the trusted source for our clientele. And, you know, we actually held off a week, you know, just to make sure that we had things in place. And uh, I mean, we were technically could have gone live uh, last Friday. Right. And we're, wait we're waiting till next Monday uh, just to make sure everything was in place and really sort of see what was happening that first week, too. Because, you know, we've all seen the, uh, the backslide uh, of, you know, infection rates going up and everything else because people open too soon or not taking proper precautions. And so, you know, it is important for us to lead the way, you know, it's, uh, and, and the tips I, you know, the ones who saw the last six tips uh, were, were great and they're right on the money and uh, that's where we have to be. I really appreciate that. Thank you, Mark. And you know, some of my, some of my advice, and I'd be interested to hear if anybody else on the call found this as well, understandably, just a tremendous amount of frustration in that, you know, being forced to close our businesses, being, you know, this just unexpected curveballs that keep happening, um, which it's, I, I really want to honor that frustration that I'm hearing all of my clients that are studio owners and business owners, and that I'm hearing all of my colleagues that are in the same boat are feeling. And the ones that I find are having the most success, find a way to move through it. Like, that, that accepting that I can't control all of these things, 
but this is what I can control. And so this is where I'm going to pour my effort because we're in fitness, we're doers, right? We're not, you know, we don't want to philosophize about everything for, you know, 10 weeks and then get going. Um, so I find that's where they're having the most success. And it sounds like you're experiencing that as well. Um, the other thing I want to highlight is um, there's a real opportunity. I know it's hard to embrace that or think that with so much bad and tough news out there, but there truly is an opportunity if we can stay focused and um, stay smart about what we're doing. Because um, uh, if you saw Hamilton, uh, one of the big messages in there was during a revolution, there's opportunity for people that have been held down or held back or ostracized to just fly up the ranks, right? And we're going through a huge upheaval. And if we stay smart and stay strong and, you know, do what's right for ourselves and our clients, I think so many of us can thrive. Um, are any of you experiencing that, like opportunities that you didn't see before that are now happening for you in your business? I, I certainly do. I and mean, there's a couple of things that have really happened. Is, you know, one, you know, the, uh, I had been dragging my feet on the whole getting, uh, doing online training and programming. And, totally. And of course we were, you know, forced into that. Well, now's the time. Uh, but that's, that's become a market that will not go away and we are we, that we was tip number our, one mark oh was it either guys he's not a plant i swear to god <laughs> yeah right but our studio is now set up for video as well and we'll it'll be ongoing we'll continue to stream our classes we'll continue to live stream personal training uh as well as doing in person but the um the, the additional market is the people who would never have come into your place in the first place who either it's too difficult to get there or it's, uh, is this number two? <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh. I'm just agreeing. I mean, like, Mark, you could have someone in Asia. You could have someone in Colorado, like, you know. It, exactly. And one of the classes we teach, uh, there's nobody else around who can teach it other, other than my wife. And she's been sick. And, you know, we have had uh, friends of ours actually zoom in and substitute teach for yes. us. So, yes. you know, from, from Maine to Pennsylvania, they're, they're taking, you know, subbing our, our classes. Uh, Brilliant so the idea. Brilliant yeah. idea. So, so it, you know, yes, we can reach those people, but we can also manage additional instructors via Zoom too. So, I mean, we can yeah. have, recruit all kinds of instructors to do stuff for us and fill out our schedule, you know, that way. And employment and payroll are such a huge, and H, you know, the, the human resources demands on a small business are disproportionately challenging. So, you know, staying open to what solutions are out there and all the upheaval, that's brilliant. I love that, Mark. That's great. Um, Teresa, Mandy, anybody else on the call? Do you have um, questions or anything, any insights or any successes um, you'd like to share? Because I think that's just as important. Thanks so much for uh, hosting this, actually, in the first place. I really appreciate you keeping a positive attitude and looking for ways to innovate and to encourage colleagues in the industry as well. Um, I think Thank that you. depending on the region, everyone is a little bit different. Um, obviously, we have different guidelines and different, you know, opening yeah. times and whatnot, um, different populations that we serve. Obviously, you know, some of us are, are hosting um, training sessions for uh, younger athletes or older adults. Um, so I think that there's always opportunity. Um, keeping that mindset is probably the most common success strategy that I've seen so far. Um, there's a book that's called The Obstacle is the Way, if you haven't um, gotten a chance to no. read that yet, but it's really, okay. really, really good. So for anybody on this call, I would definitely recommend it um, because it does help train your brain to look at everything as an opportunity. Um, so I love Mark's idea of recruiting different types of instructors, um, maybe offering a so little great. more variety that way. I think that's genius. And, yeah. you know, I think that um, taking this time to really, you know, um, assess your organization, your business, assess your business practices. And like you said, um, really systemize things, whether it's cleaning or whether it's, you know, client management or financial management of your business. This is probably the best time we've ever had to do that. Uh, so I greatly appreciate 
everyone here for sticking it out <laughs> and proving right. resilience because a lot of what we, you know, I've been a trainer for 13 years and I could say a lot of, you know, in my experience, a lot of what it's all about is helping clients understand and unveil strength that they never knew they had. And so I think that when they see us embodying that in this industry and showing them that we walk the talk and that yes. no matter what comes, we too will look for that inner strength and resilience um, and have the faith to move forward in an actionable and measurable and, and um, invisible way. I think that that's only going to inspire them more and even bring more loyalty uh, to our client base. 110%, absolutely. Because I think so many of us have those long-term relationships with our clients where they go to us for so many things and they trust us so well that it's in these kinds of times of crisis and challenge that when we continue to lean in and be the leader, just exactly as you're saying, Mandy, it just, it fosters even more. And then that bleeds into it as a you know business coach, the most organic and true and authentic marketing efforts where you know you've built the trust you've led you've put in the value you suspended memberships as needed you know things like that um and then they say to their friends oh no no you got to come see mark or you got to come see mandy or you've got to you know um because they're doing it right um absolutely yeah i think that's so great thank you for sharing that and i wrote down the book i'll send the book link in it and then mark you mark uh is a just the phenomenal industry leader. So honored to have him on the call. Mark, would you share the title of your book as well? Oh, <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, it, it's just the, the business of personal training yep. through human kinetics. Beautiful. And I'll put the link in uh, the follow-up of that. Um, I, I mean, I love it just by the title. Anyone who knows me. Yeah. <laughs> Either way, uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap and I'll follow up with an email. Again, so thrilled to have you guys on this. I'm going to keep offering these uh, types of things. So please don't hesitate to spread the word. Um, also, don't hesitate to let me know what you'd like to hear more of um, or what struggles you're having that you feel like people aren't answering yet because I'm super happy to and to help. But Many, many thanks to you guys for um, joining. And uh, I really, really appreciate you being here and have a beautiful, safe rest of your day. And uh, hopefully I'll, I'll get to see your faces again very soon.